Hi students, for last some days we have been talking about noun and its different parts. So far we have discussed noun as a concept, proper noun, common noun and collective noun with a great detail description and I think that uh, this will be helpful for you to write down your answer regarding all these things for university examination and the different boards and competitive examinations. Today just uh, we are going to make a very interesting talk on abstract noun. You know from the name itself abstract noun it implies that uh, the noun which is of abstract nature is called abstract noun we can simply say that uh, the objects or things here can be divided into two broader categories there are some objects which are of concrete nature and there are some objects which are of abstract nature you know, there are some objects which can be studied through our sense organs and uh, we can exactly include nouns like proper noun, common noun into concrete nature of noun because we can see uh, the person, the place and we can also see the class like dog and cow. But have you ever seen love? Have you ever seen beauty? We can simply say that no, we have not seen love, we have not seen beauty. Rather, we know them through our experience about these things. It is why love has not been concretely defined. Symbolically it is defined. Maybe a rose stands for love or just uh, we may cite the tale of Sarvan Kumar to show the love of a son to parents and uh, the tale of uh, just uh, Aroni is to be described as the devotion of a disciple for his teacher. So it is uh, through all these kind of instances we try to reflect on abstract now like devotion, abstract now like love. But exactly it becomes very difficult for a person, say philosopher or linguist, to define exactly in the term as we can define the common noun like father, like mother like a school and so on because here we have some visible traits and to understand the idea about and form the idea about noun like tree and flower is easier for the students because they have the images of a tree and uh, uh, the book and so when we utter the word like tree and book the image is very much formed in our mind and we know what uh, the speaker is intending by the word book and tree but exactly uh, it doesn't happen when we are talking about boyhood you know because we have never seen boyhood or fatherhood or motherhood we cannot say that uh, the person has actually seen uh, his boyhood. Rather, uh, there is a phase of life uh, which is known as just the phase of boyhood. There is a feeling of mother that is motherhood and there is a feeling of father that is uh, what we can call uh, fatherhood. But exactly it has never been seen nor touched nor test it. So it is uh, the matter of our feeling, our experience or our insight 
by which we can describe as techno it is why we can say that it is of sometimes supernatural nature also there are uh, just uh, some supernatural traits uh, which are very much associated with abstract noun we have abstract noun uh, like god we have abstract noun like uh, heaven you know and hell uh, we actually have never seen you know by uh, all these things we have imagined it is much more imaginative then it is uh, of practical experience we can uh, imagine uh, a statehood we can imagine uh, just a board and we can imagine uh, the feeling of responsibility and duty and so on uh, so what we uh, try to say is uh, the fact that uh, it is uh, just uh, by help of our imagination our experience our insight and uh, our ability of understanding all these kind of things which can help us understand abstract now so we can very much say that uh, as it is not felt as it is not touched it is above, above uh, just touching it is above seeing it is above hearing you know so uh, the area of uh, just uh, abstract noun is by and large metaphysical that uh, uh, we go beyond our sense perception to understand the abstract noun concept and so on so you know because it does not have any physical realities we cannot uh, in definite term describe all these things so there is no definiteness of idea there is no certainty of idea so we can say that uh, uh even uh the grammarians even the linguists have actually uh made certain observation as to uh the formation of the word like abstract noun you know we have most often formed the abstract noun from common noun you know we have also formed abstract noun from adjective and sometimes from verb or maybe there are some abstract noun which are originally abstract nouns you know love heaven god are abstract noun which are abs- um, originally abstract noun you know there is no derivation of uh, the word in god and in heaven and hell and so on and religion and the uh, uh, term philosophy and uh, term linguistics and physics because they are originally made like this there is no derivation there is no process of formation which has gone through in the uh, just a uh, uh, coining of these words so what uh, we uh, should understand at this point that abstract noun is uh, generally uh, uh, or originally uh, made there is nothing just as prefix and suffix that we can find there attached you know it is prefix less it is suffix less rather there is hardly any prefix that we can use in the making of abstract noun yeah there are some remarkable suffixes which are only used in the formation of abstract noun we can say that these suffixes are not used elsewhere except abstract noun or just when it is a matter of identification of word like abstract noun we should notice whether it is derived it is formed by dint of certain suffix yes we can say if they have been derived by dint of certain suffix we can with surety say that oh this word age abstract noun so here is uh, a list of i have made some list of uh, uh, some suffixes by which we can identify the words belonging to abstract noun so here uh, first suffix is et ity you know generally when we find we break the word and we find that root word is something different and in the root word 
we have added et suffix and by adding et suffix in the root word we have derived and formed abstract noun now have our, here we have the example abnormal that is an adjective this is the root word and in the uh, root word adjective abnormal we have added suffix et and so that uh, uh, word abnormal is now changed into abstract noun now so abnormal which is not normal and abnormality the state which is not of normal nature now the meaning is of the uh, transformation of abstract noun nothing more than that it is uh, most often realized that we have some time the transformation of the meaning from uh, the root word into abstract noun now absurd is here uh, the example of an adjective and uh, when we have just to use certain ad abstract noun form of the adjective absurd we can very much use here the suffix uh, et and we get the word like absurdity and ab absurdity is itself an adjective and by adjective absurd we have abstract noun absurdity activity now that activity is the derived word into abstract noun but active is the root word not root word act is rather the root word from the act we have the adjective form if active and from that adjective active we have adverb activity it is in this way we have formed activity and uh, adaptability adapt that is the root word from that root word adapt we have got adjective form adaptable and from that adjective form adaptable we have adverb adaptability so in all these examples we have come to the point that from the root word we have derived the abstract noun form and its meaning is simply transformation of the meaning of root word into abstract noun now we can talk about uh, the suffix like gum that we have used into free that is adjective and the state of being free is freedom that is an abstract noun made out of the dumb suffix into adjective free now king king is noun and from that noun we have made the abstract noun kingdom and from board we have the abstract noun boredom so out of the suffix dom we have form three abstract noun including freedom kingdom and boredom now we have just uh, taken another suffix that is ship so we can say the ship is also abstract noun marker so are dom and et and we find that these uh, suffixes are very much marker of abstract noun so hard adjective from that hard we have abstract noun hardship using ship suffix prind is a common noun from that prind common noun we have found the word like friendship into abstract noun scholar from common noun scholar we have the abstract noun form a scholarship and from kin we have kinship so here the suffix ship is very much used to form abstract nouns hardship friendship scholarship and kinship the next uh, suffix is age that has been used in the formation of the word like parentage storage coverage cottage and carriage you find that uh, there are verbs like cover store carry and here in all these words from the verb form we have a verb like coverage storage carriage and so on so verb has been changed into a step down for now we should notice one point that uh, here the suffix is used only with uh, 
the lexical word like uh, out of noun, common noun, we can find abstract noun, or from adjective that is a lexical word, we can find uh, uh, abstract noun, from verb, main verb rather, we can find abstract noun. So wherever suffix is used, that is used with uh, just a noun and adjective and verb. Now here we have uh, the suffix like ends refer the verb from that verb we have reference prefer the verb from that prefer we have the en suffix ence and uh, the abstract noun form is preference now exist is also a verb and uh, from that exist verb we have the abstract noun form existence and persist plus enc persistence so what we can find is the fact that uh, we have used ence suffix ends with the verb here one point to be noted is that we cannot use uh, suffix out of our will uh, we cannot say why we uh, cannot use et suffix with reference, reference t or prefer t like that. You know, it is all uh, lexically determined. You know, we most often follow the prescription of uh, dictionary so as to the process of word making is concerned. Here, what prefix is to be used with what verb? is just solely decided by our dictionary or lexicography. Individually, out of our will, we cannot uh, use any prefix anywhere with any word that we can form word. So, we can uh, develop this very sense of using prefix and formation of word by our practice. Uh, in the beginning, we are just going to learn through our lexicography or when we learn use of some of the suffixes, later on we get the idea where to use and for what purpose. It, it is why I say that ANCE is definitely used with a verb to make verb into abstract noun and similar is the story of meant to. Meant, uh, is also used with verb to call, change that verb into abstract noun like from move verb we have the abstract noun movement here place is noun also but uh, we see that place as a verb has been used as a root word to form the word placement after any anti suffix settle is once again the verb and from that settle we have the abstract noun settlement and a point is once again the verb and from that a point verb we have the abstract noun appointment so exclusively we may say that meant is uh, the suffix used with a verb to form the abstract noun but uh, so far as ness suffix is concerned we observe that ness is used with adjective to change that adjective into abstract noun. We have the example of kind, appropriate and exact. And uh, these all basic words are adjective of nature. And from that adjective we have the abstract noun kindness, appropriateness and exactness into the abstract noun form. Now we should notice uh, uh, just uh, about uh, the use of hood and uh, we can say that hood is generally used with a common noun to change it into abstract noun form child, father, mother are common nouns that we had already discussed in our previous lecture but from child a common noun we have childhood that is abstract noun meaning of that child father fatherhood and mother motherhood now the second last uh, suffix of discussion of today is here t i o n i o n 
and uh, we generally find here too uh, most of the basic words are verb and from that verb we can make abstract, uh, an abstract noun like value, valuation, cancel, verb, cancellation and abbreviate verb and from that abbreviate we have the abstract noun abbreviation and finally we have suffix ism now generally you find it is a kind of theory uh, that uh, we refer to by using ism like from the proper noun gandhi the theory of gandhi is known as gandhism philosophy of marx uh, is known as marxism and favor itself is an abstract noun and from that uh, favor we have theory of favor that is favoritism and so we have social adjective and uh, theory of society from social welfare is known as socialism so these are all possible uh, suffixes uh, which we have dealt with and we should understand that uh, uh, when we find the words having et, dom, shape, as, ens, ment, ness, hood, ism, and ism at the end of the words, we should notice that these words are used into abstract noun form. So we also uh, may say that these are all abstract noun markers. We can also uh, just make some words using this suffixage or most often you find in case of common error uh, because there are some special rules which are made for use of how to use common noun rather. So in that case it is uh, the great challenge for the student to know the words with their word classes and here we have just uh, understood that these suffixes are very much helpful for making us sure about the abstract noun word class of the noun that we have found. So this time we have just discussed the basic information about the abstract noun with uh, just a special reference uh, uh, with a suffix. I hope that it can help you understand that noun and we can enjoy these um, suffixes especially to huge uh, um, just a word either verb adjective or common noun to form into abstract noun this time we have just uh, enough to uh, stop and we stop this time